welcome to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast, where it's all about helping you complete your financial journey to retirement. Discover time-tested strategies and get unconventional insights into wealth building and retirement that actually work. Break away from the herd and go for the retirement you dream of. And now, here's your host, the income engineer, Craig Strom. All right, back on Personal Pension Radio. Thank you so much for joining me. I am actually recording this on New Year's Day. New Year's Day 2018, 2018. Thank you so much for all the support. Really have appreciated all of the feedback, all of the questions, the emails that I get. I have new clients that have joined me after listening to this show. That is just uh, the best form of flattery, and I truly appreciate it. So happy new year to you. And yes, I am Craig Strom, the income engineer specializing in maximum retirement income that's what I want to help you do. I am broadcasting from my studio workshop here in Southern California, where I build fine furniture and various crafts and projects uh, in my wood shop and record this podcast. Yes, right here in that very same wood shop. Uh, someone asked me recently, what was I working on? I actually have three different tables going right now, uh, three different tables simultaneously. Two of them uh, are actually a surprise housewarming gift for some very good friends of ours that live in Texas, and they do not know that these uh, tables are coming. Uh, now, I might have just spoiled it because uh, he occasionally listens to my show, so we'll see, but uh, he has no idea what's coming, I'm pretty sure. So let's jump right in. My mission, as you heard me say, being the income engineer, is I really want to deliver that retirement dream that Wall Street has been promising for all these years. They just have fallen short being able to truly deliver that maximum retirement income lifestyle that they've been pitching for all these years. I want to help you pull back the curtain on this mainstream financial machine that advertises everywhere and that advice. I want to help you see behind the curtain so that you can ask the right questions, so that you can make sure that you personally are on the right track, that you're not being snookered. How's that for a word? You're not being snookered by the marketing message out there that is basically just a marketing message designed by Wall Street, fed through financial advisors and financial planners to you, the general public, to basically do Wall Street's bidding. Okay. I want to make sure that you can actually ask questions and make some solid decisions for you and what's right for you. Now, areas that I can help with, I can help with all different aspects of that financial planning formula, if you will. But I love working on retirement plans, 401ks, Roth IRAs, IRA rollovers, income for retirement, income before retirement, life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care insurance. These are all things that you should be talking with your financial planner about. If your investment advisor or your financial planner is not having a detailed discussion about all of these things, then you might not be working with the most comprehensive financial advisor or financial planner that you could be. I want to make sure that you have hope for retirement. Know this. There is an option to turn the light back on at the end of the tunnel to make sure that you know you don't have to follow the Wall Street just conventional advice, which leads to a very disappointing conversation about retirement income. There are options if you plan properly. Now, quick disclosure, I am not an attorney. I am not a certified public accountant, but I am a certified financial planner professional. All that being said, and as qualified as, in my opinion, I am, please don't act on advice that you hear on this show as if you're hearing things for you personally. And especially, please, New Year's resolution time, please don't act on advice that you hear from financial entertainers like Dave Ramsey, people who have no licenses, who have no oversight from anybody watching out to protect the general public, Please don't act on things that you hear from financial entertainers on TV, radio, or podcasts. Meet with a qualified financial planner, for crying out loud. There's many thousands of us all across the country. Please do that before you take action. Now, bonus segment this week, 
kind of a recap or a revisit, uh, my bonus segment is Deal of the Week. Whenever I get a good deal, because those of you who listen to the show, and if you're new, I love a great deal. I do not like paying retail when I can afford it. Uh, when I can afford it, meaning when I can actually do something about it. When I have time, and I have time that affords me the opportunity to do something about paying retail, maybe I wait a little longer, maybe I'm a little more patient, I get a good deal. So a few weeks back, I actually had posted that I got a great deal on a new vehicle, an SUV for my daughter. It's actually a used vehicle that I had been shopping with her for weeks and weeks and weeks. We were shopping and we came close to buying a a vehicle here and a vehicle there. And we just, just wasn't right. So we were patient and I was patient. And if you know me, patience is not one of my main virtues. And I was really patient about it. And sure enough, whammo, somebody that I had in my network and in my world in the used car business, because I do have a used car dealership license. Uh, That's a little side hobby of mine. A friend of mine actually had a great deal come across his desk. It ended up coming to my email and whammo, Madeline got her SUV, actually one of the SUVs that she was really hoping we could find a deal on, and this was a screaming deal. So today, on New Year's Day, she and her uh, boyfriend and their family, they all drove out for a Disneyland trip from Arizona and stopped by this afternoon to get her new used SUV, and she loves it. So that was really exciting uh, to see her drive away in her SUV and and very cool. Now, I do have a legitimate deal of the week this week, just as a reminder to everybody. Now, Christmas is just behind us now. Please don't forget, take a look at your iPhone or your Android phone, and remember, you have one of the coolest shopping tools in the palm of your hand. So here's what happened. I am, as you heard, building these projects for people. Uh, I've got a couple of like two or three things going in my wood shop. And it's time to actually put the finishing touches, literally the finish on these tables. Now, when you do that, it's really important to actually get all of the dust and all of the debris blown off or vacuumed off your project and then wipe down before you actually put the finish on. Well, I actually have an air compressor to blow things off with, but it's in my garage, actually at the front of my property, and I use it for my car stuff to fill up tires and things like that. So I don't have an air compressor in my wood shop. So I knew I knew I need to get a, an air compressor and I just haven't needed one for almost two years. I have not needed an air compressor, so there was no important pressing reason to buy one. Well, I've got a pretty significant amount of finishing work to do, and that works so much better when you have an air compressor to blow off all the dust. So I set about looking for an air compressor. My first thought was, I'll take a look at Craigslist and offer up and eBay and everything else to see, is there any good deal on a used air compressor somewhere near me? No, unfortunately, there wasn't. So I headed off to Home Depot and Lowe's to see if there was any after Christmas sales. As I was standing in the the aisle at Home Depot, and then I left because I didn't find any deals there, I went to Lowe's, and I'm standing in the aisle and I'm looking at the retail price of an air compressor. And they were three, four hundred dollars for the size that made sense for my wood shop. I just couldn't do it. And I thought to myself, well, why not? You know, let me let me take a look. And I pulled out my phone again and I opened the same Craigslist app that I had looked at an hour earlier. And sure enough, in my hometown. 10 minutes away from where I was standing, someone had on that same day posted just then a used air compressor for sale, and it was $125. And that means that I saved, oh, pushing about 250 bucks somewhere in that neighborhood. And sure enough, I 
uh, texted that individual. It was available. He had just barely posted it. And I drove to his house, which was only five minutes from my house. And I got my deal of the week. I have my used Craftsman air compressor in my wood shop. Uh, my dad would be proud because he's a craftsman. He was a craftsman guy. So deal of the week. Check that iPhone or your Android phone in your hand and and shop. Uh, so save some cash. Uh, yeah, it was really exciting. Now, let's get on with it. Segment one, watch your step. On the last episode, because I did actually take some time off where I didn't post a uh, an episode last week, the last episode I actually talked about um, this idea that penalties were being waived for flood victims, right? It seemed like a nice little gift, you know, when it came from, you know, you're talking about tax penalties for IRA withdrawals. This idea that that the government was waiving the penalty for people who needed to take money out to pay for their house that was flooded. Well, that sounded friendly, but in my opinion, it was the government basically taking advantage of people's terrible situation and getting their tax revenue off this IRA money sooner, right? I don't think the government does anything nice in that respect when it comes to taxes. Uh, that was a previous episode. If you want to go back and definitely listen to the the full my full rant on that, please do that for sure. Now, this week, watch your step. I want to urge everybody to freeze, absolutely freeze. With all this hype around President Trump's tax plan, right, most people have forgotten, at least it seems like this to me, they have forgotten that, in my opinion, the biggest news of 2017 from a financial and money point of view is the Equifax data breach. Everybody's forgotten about it. Don't forget that one of the largest credit bureaus in the world was breached. People lost bunches of information that went out into the ether and nobody's talking about it anymore. So I'm going to encourage you as a new year's resolution, freeze your credit. It is so easy to do. I did mine online, took 10 minutes or so. I don't remember. It was so easy. Go to the three big credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and uh, whatever the other one was, right? And freeze your credit. It's super easy. And I'll tell you what, if you need to unfreeze your credit to get a car loan for your daughter, <laughs> it's not hard to do. And you can unfreeze it for a short specified period of time. Piece of cake, right? Definitely encourage you to freeze your credit. Now, Segment two, I've got a listener uh, question that came in, but last week, the last time uh, we were, I was on the podcast, I talked about fixing a broken retirement plan. And I think I've got a, um, a theme going for the next several episodes is my, my ranting and raving and mostly ranting is actually going to be coming from my own financial advisor magazines. Uh, they just, they really do make my blood boil a bit. And in the last episode, I talked about an article written by William Bengen, the father of modern retirement withdrawal theory, if you will, some would say, about fixing a broken retirement plan. And I have to tell you, it was so hilarious and so sad as a financial planner to, to read this complicated just just blah, 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 blah. It was like, I, I think my reference was, it was like a Jackson Pollock painting. Uh, it just, ugh. Go back and listen to that. Fixing a broken retirement plan. You've got to hear what financial advisors are being taught or fed by the financial advisor community. You've got to hear this stuff so you understand what's out there. And if you hear this kind of stuff coming from your financial advisor or your financial planner, it might throw up a red flag to go, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I should uh, ask some more questions. Now, this week, as you might have guessed, sure enough, more wisdom from Financial Advisor Magazine. Now, just as a reminder, this is the magazine that I get as a financial planner and investment advisor. Uh, I'm kind of in the club, right? I have all the licenses and letters after my name, so I'm automatically in the club and I get this magazine. Now, 
This article caught my eye, and it's it started this way. The title is Helping Wealthy Clients Achieve Better Outcomes. Now, of course, wealthy is in there to get the attention of financial advisors who just want to work with wealthy folks. I would encourage you to do what I do is I actually took the wealthy out and I just read it this way. Helping clients achieve better outcomes because that is exactly what I do. I help my clients achieve better retirement income outcomes. That's what I do. Now, this was a discussion of how to help clients with a withdrawal strategy that is not based only on the Monte Carlo simulation. Now, if you don't know what the Monte Carlo simulation is, here's the general idea. You walk into a casino, you go up to the roulette wheel, you put your your money down and you put your chips on 10 and you spin the wheel and you basically have this crazy odds of where that ball and the roulette wheel will fall, okay? The Monte Carlo simulation is a computer program that much of Wall Street and the financial advisory community still uses today that runs all kinds of different probabilities and tests and and scenarios to see what are the odds that your chosen withdrawal strategy, let's say you've got a million dollars and you want to take out 4%, that's what the 4% rule is, a million dollars and you take out 4%. Well, you run a Monte Carlo simulation for 30 years or more because people live a long time nowadays. What are the odds that that 4% withdrawal scenario will work? Well, the reality is, and most times I've run it, it's about a 12% failure rate, meaning that you've got a 12% chance that your 4% withdrawal rate will not work. So just to put that in perspective, if you're getting on a plane to go on vacation and the flight attendant or, you know, the captain got on the uh, intercom system and said, hey, everybody, welcome aboard. We're really looking forward to our flight today. We've run 5,000 different simulations through our computer and we have found that we have a 78%, or let's say we have an 88% chance that we're going to make it all the way to our destination. That means we have a 12% chance that we will not make it all the way to our destination. How many people are going to join me getting off that plane, right? So that's what a Monte Carlo simulation is. It is a computer program that figures out what are the odds, what are the odds of your gamble on 4% will work out. And in many cases that I've run, it's about an 88% success ratio, 12% failure. You have no idea whether or not you will retire in the winning side of that or the losing side because it's it just all depends. It's, it's spinning the wheel. So this article starts off with how to help clients achieve better outcomes and says, This will be a discussion of how to help clients with a withdrawal strategy that is not based only on the Monte Carlo simulation. Like, oh, so of course it gets my attention because I know a withdrawal, uh, a retirement income withdrawal strategy that has nothing to do with Monte Carlo simulations. And maybe they're going to talk about it this time. Maybe. Right? No, they didn't. So they go on to say this, right? When they look at this, they're trying to deal with this idea that the implications of all of this is that all models, all computer models, all simulations, all Monte Carlo simulations, which are models, have flaws. Okay. They just admitted like they all have a flaw in some way, you know, shape or another. The author says he wants to help address the shortcomings of a standard Monte Carlo simulation analysis and provide a framework for more meaningful client conversations. What does that mean? Okay, all right. Well, keep in mind, I'm reading this, and I, I do have an eyebrow up, and I'm, I'm skeptical 
I am so skeptical when I read my own industry publications nowadays. Uh, well, for years I've been that way, right? Now, my favorite part, here we go. The author goes on to say, the PFR, PFR, I've never heard that before. This is interesting. The personal funding ratio is a concept borrowed from the defined benefit pension world. Ha, huh. okay. So number one, you as the general public, you might not recognize this, but this clearly told me right there that this author has an investment only bias. This person is in the investment world. The solution to retirement income has got to be based on something to do with the investment world because what he does is he says the personal funding ratio, which they made up, that's their own term, personal funding ratio, this whole thing they made up, is a concept borrowed from the defined benefit pension world. Well, let's talk about that. Where do they borrow this personal funding ratio concept? Well, the defined benefit pension world has been there, has been around for, I don't know, several hundreds of years, right? These are pensions. Defined benefit plan is an annuity, a series of income payments offered by an employer or a government entity. So a defined benefit plan is something that most Americans, 65, almost 70% of Americans 35 years ago, 40 years ago, had a pension. They had the, the, the guaranteed income in retirement based on how much was funded into the plan and, listen to this, on mortality. So a defined benefit plan pays income on the amount funded into the plan, that's obviously you got to have money in the plan, and on a mortality calculation based on the age of the person receiving the income. And the income from a defined benefit plan is guaranteed by the claims paying ability of the issuer, whether that be a city, state, federal government, a corporation. Life insurance companies also issued annuities, guaranteed income streams, right? So who else offers income streams? Yeah, that's what I said. Insurance company annuities. Insurance companies offer annuities that pay income based on the amount funded and based on mortality credit. You get credit, higher income for being older, right? Now, this article went on for pages, seriously pages. It is just more colored boxes and just, remember this, this person said they were trying to help me, the financial advisor, have a more meaningful conversation with you. Oh my gosh, if I tried to have a conversation with people about the stuff in this article, uh, people would just get up and leave their own houses while I was sitting at the table. I mean, I, I think really, just they'd just be get out, right? This is not helping me have a more meaningful conversation because what do really people want to know? They want to know how much income can I have and will it run out, okay? Now, the author goes on to say, the personal funding rate uses mortality discounts. Maybe they're getting to the part where they cut the article short and say, buy an annuity, right? That's what I read. When I read they're using mortality discounts, mortality, that refers back to the defined benefit plan world because remember, they pay income based on how old you are and guaranteed annuities from insurance companies. They are also used in many cases for defined benefit pension plans. They pay income in large part based on how old you are. The older you are, the more income you have. My mom has a guaranteed annuity that pays her income. She has two of them, actually, that pays her income. One of them she started 14 years ago after my dad died. And then the other, she needed to just get older. That's what I told her. We're going to leave this guaranteed annuity alone for 10 years. And she said, okay, what do we do? And I said, you get older because you get mortality credit. Every year you get older, 
your future income check will go up, okay? So I'm thinking that they're referencing mortality discounts. And all right, they're going to get to the point where helping people with their maximum income question, let's talk about annuities. Nope. The personal funding ratio, this is what they say, tries to incorporate current interest rates and mortality expectations into both the feasibility of the plan and its use as a reporting mechanism. What? What in the, what does, again, I'm reading this as a certified financial planner. This is my industry publication that comes once a month. And it just goes on and it just makes no sense to me, right? Now, it does make sense to me, but how in the world could I ever try to have a conversation with someone, a client about this, right? They go on to say the personal funding ratio is calculated. Haha, listen to this. The personal funding ratio is calculated very much like an actuary would price an annuity. Here's a crazy idea. Why not go to an insurance company that has been pricing annuities and guaranteeing income for 150 years and have them do it, right? Remember what I said earlier, the bias is so clear in these articles that this is investment only retirement. Investments are the only answer. And we've got to figure out how are we going to be able to have a conversation with our clients financial advisors, so that we can convince them they don't need to go over there and look behind the curtain at that guaranteed annuity that actually pays income based on mortality, and they haven't missed a payment in 150 years. Well, we really don't want the the clients to go over there to the insurance industry. We want them to stay in the Wall Street investment industry, right? The bias is so dramatic, right? Because they wouldn't be able to write a six-page article giving financial advisors crazy ideas about how to talk and have a fearless conversation with their clients. They actually said that. Have a fearless conversation with your clients. (laughs) Oh my gosh, just kills me. Folks, I've said it before in in my intros before. You have to know this. Investments are not the answer to maximum retirement income. Real estate, not the answer to maximum retirement income. Annuities, not the answer to maximum retirement income. Life insurance, not the answer. All of these things together, though, if you happen to have life insurance, investments, annuities, real estate, if you have these things in the right balance and you're using them for the right reasons and the right ratios, that's where maximum retirement income comes from right? This idea that you've come up with some personal funding ratio, blah, 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 to to kind of replicate and look like annuities. You know what? Why don't we just go get an annuity and let the annuity do what it's best at? And that's exactly what happened just a few weeks ago. I was introduced to um, a a nice lady uh, here locally in Southern California who had lost her husband. Uh, he had passed away you know, they kind of unexpectedly, and, and here she was now trying to figure out, gosh, how is she going to survive without his or Social Security cuts, et cetera, et cetera. And as it turned out, guaranteed income was a critical piece for her. Guaranteed income, absolutely top of the line. You know what made her feel really, really good is knowing that she now has a plan in place that when she's ready, She will have a known, predictable, set, guaranteed income based on her age and not at risk in the stock market in these crazy PFR Monte Carlo simulations. She doesn't ever have to worry about any of that. All she has to do is get older. As she gets older and when she's ready in the future, we'll be able to turn on a known, guaranteed income that, in my opinion... I'll have to say my opinion because, you know, you can't guarantee certain things. In my opinion, her guaranteed annuity income that she'll take in the future will be substantially higher than any investment-only strategy I could have offered her. An investment-only strategy for income would never come close to the guaranteed income that she will have when 
and if she wants it. And for now, she doesn't want it. So she has a plan that she knows she's safe and secure, and she doesn't stress about anything financially anymore. She knows she's going to be okay, right? So folks, this podcast is so much about me just blowing off steam because this is the world I get to live in. I am just that guy standing outside of the crowd, just waving my hands as much as I can to say, folks, get over here. Let me help you take a look at your retirement path in a way that you've never looked at it before. Wall Street is going to lead you down the same path that they've been leading people down for the last 30 to 40 years. I am just doing my darndest to pull you out of line and say, come on over here. So there's a New Year's resolution for you. Contact me through my LinkedIn page or just Craig with a K at CraigStrom.com and email me. Say, hey, I want to have a conversation about my own personal finances. I want to talk about the path that we're on. I want to know what direction we're headed right now, and I want to know if we can fix it. If you've already retired, absolutely, we can fix it. If you are close to retirement, you've got to get in touch with me before you pull the trigger. Seriously, you've got to get in touch with someone who is willing to stand outside of the Wall Street crowd and pull the curtain back and make sure that you know what you're up against. Very much look forward to it. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so much for all the support. Really, take action. Make it a fantastic week, month, year, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you for listening to the Personal Pension Radio Podcast. If you missed anything during the show, that's okay. We took the notes for you. Check the show notes for links, offers, and a full transcript. And don't forget to head over to personalpensionradio.com and download your free retirement income report. While you are there, we would appreciate some iTunes love. Please leave us a fantastic rating on iTunes by going to personalpensionradio slash iTunes. Thanks again for listening. Now for the disclosure. <laughs> Information presented is for educational purposes only and is not intended for solicitation, sale or purchase of any security or financial product. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and your tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed here. The term personal pension refers to a marketing name designed to educate future retirees and retirees about the economic principles behind creating their own pension-like income. The term personal pension is not intended to be confused with a defined benefit pension plan offered by an employer or by a government entity.